is Max and Friends, and I'm your host, Max Tucci. My co-host, Tamara Bowman, is going to be here in just a minute. But you know what? Without any further ado, let's pull up our guest of the evening, Mr. Joseph Lumpkin, a famous author, with over 50 books in his catalog. Joseph, welcome to Max and Friends. Welcome back. Hi, Max. Thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. Absolutely. You're making your rounds at LA Talk Radio. We've seen you've been on another show here as well. Yes, yes. I think that that one is actually uh, over uh, Internet instead of just uh, being broadcast and over Internet like yours. So, uh, But, yeah, it's it's been fun. It's been cool. And I got an email from you that since you were on our show last, your books bumped up in sales. Thank you. Thank you for the bump. So, absolutely. We are very happy that that, uh, that, that was able to happen with you. You have uh, some great books, and one in particular that you know, really got the ball rolling here at Max and Friends is uh, the Book of Enoch, or how do you really pronounce Enoch? Because there's so many pronunciations. That's close. That's, that's it, Enoch. Um, or as we say down south, Enoch. But, okay. Uh, we have a <laughs> we have a expansion for that that came out um, partly because we have been doing so many radio shows and interviews and uh, touring a little bit, speaking at, at uh, churches and gatherings and such. And there had been a lot of uh, questions that weren't covered in the book. And so we put out uh, the book of Enoch, a complete guide and reference, which hopefully will be more complete than the first one. It has the same really good translation to it, very readable, very very clear modern English with uh, things that people have asked about uh, being addressed uh, above and beyond what the first one uh, covered. Hmm. So there's just an expansion going on, right? And an involvement and change. Involvement, change, and that's what we're going to talk about, I hope. <clears throat> because uh, Absolutely. Let's yeah, dive right into it. Let's dive right into well, how actually, it's such a broad topic, but how religion has evolved and changed. But I'm sure you can handle it and tackle it. So where should we even start, Joseph? Well, let's start with a confession, shall we? Uh, Absolutely. In, in doing the Book of Jubilees, uh, which has been out for about uh, two years, I recently found a small error. It wasn't anything that would change the theology of it, but it was an error in translation, which I went back and corrected. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is, is actually how some uh, evolution happens, uh, through error, uh, through error and through uh, correction of error. For example, in the Book of Jubilees, uh, <clears throat> Everything, the, the, the book's title comes from the fact that every 50th year, a jubilee year, is celebrated. And in that, in that celebration, you free the slaves and you forgive the bills, and it's, it's basically uh, a year of grace. You just spread grace abroad, and that reminds us of God's grace in our life. And so every 50 years, you, you say, okay, uh, you don't have to pay back that debt. And servant, you've been with me for 30 years. Uh, go free. Be happy. Mm-hmm. And and so everything is timed in this book according to how many jubilees has passed. Mm-hmm. And there was a very small error that said uh, that Cain was born in this particular jubilee and Abel was born in that particular jubilee. And it wasn't the case. What actually happened was that Abel and Cain were born in the same jubilee on different weeks. But a week within a jubilee is seven years. Okay. So you had an error that that wouldn't have changed anything except that there was something not quite right. It got added, and, and the word week got dropped. So it kind of it started reminding me of all the things that happened in our Bible that had changed, that actually we have built complete denominations on these changes that people have made throughout the uh, uh, 1,600 years that we've had the Bible around. Mm. So a lot of things have been dropped and a lot of things thrown away. We mentioned that on the last show, that a lot of stuff has been thrown away, and a lot of stuff should still be in these books, but man has erased them. That is exactly true, absolutely, and well said, yes. Now, man has erased them, what, for fear, for lack of knowledge, for or too much knowledge? <laughs> oh, see, there, therein lies the huge, huge question. Let's take, for example, uh, the Apocrypha in general. Mm-hmm. And the Apocrypha, Apocrypha means that which is hidden. 
And uh, a group thought that it was hidden because it had inner knowledge, it had very secret knowledge in it, that really only the priests should have. Mm. So those books began to become kind of cloistered away, and, uh, and we didn't pay much attention to them. But because we didn't pay much attention to them, when the Protestant church broke away, it decided that they were hidden because they were less worthy. And over a period of time, the Apocrypha was, was dealt with less and less until finally, around the 1800s, which hasn't been that long ago, right. it disappeared from the Bible. Uh, beginning in around 1790, there was one Bible that was produced without the Apocrypha. Now, this is the books of Tobit and, or Tobit and Judith and Maccabees and all of those. And every single Bible that you could buy had the Apocrypha. And then once and for all, they made this switch to, to, to do two Bibles, two versions, around the early 1800s. Now, when you say they, who do you think they were that made this switch? The Catholic Church? The... Which church and is, do you think it was that eliminated them? It was done because of money. Yeah. <laughs> money is a mood changer, is it not? <laughs> it really is in everything. If you could produce a Bible that was, uh, a, you know, a quarter less large, a quarter fewer pages, mm -hmm. and you could make, uh, you could make more profit. So, <clears throat> so now you have Bibles that were basically uh, smaller. Two, two versions, yeah. You had a Catholic version and a Protestant version. And the Protestant version had fewer books. So do you think it was really just to save money on printing that this happened, or do you think there was really a grand scheme behind it? I believe that the Protestants did not want it, and they uh, pushed to have a Bible that was actually produced for themselves, and that uh, actually ended up saving people money, so they were very, very welcoming uh, of the idea. Mm. However, I things have been added. Uh, things, things have been added that should not be there. Uh, so the truth has been eliminated and lies have been added. Yes. It sounds like our government this day. It, it, it Nothing does. is Line new under online. the sun. <laughs> yeah, it, and it's sad out there, isn't it? Our, uh, I heard a, a speech a couple of days ago that said that uh, personal freedom exists in a vacuum of governmental freedom. And uh, wherever government uh, is not, that allows personal freedom. So our personal freedoms are being slowly eaten away. But, but that's yeah. another show now, isn't it? That's another show. <laughs> That let's, take, let's take the Lord's Prayer, for example. Um, are, you, are you Catholic? Uh, you know, I was born Catholic. And not that I denounce it in any ways, but it's just not the religion that I practice now. I appreciate it, but I'm not Catholic. But I do know <laughs> the Lord's Prayer very well. Okay, so the Catholic, the, the standard Catholic Lord's Prayer does not have the words, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever in it, usually. It stops before that. Mm -hmm. And the reason it stops before that is that that particular verse, which a lot of us have heard all through our life, was actually added much later. So the, uh, the uh, standard version that the Catholics use does not have that in it.